Hey YouTube, it's Mark here. Um, just wanted to share today um, a very, very important verse of the Bible. I mean, they all are, but uh, this one in particular in relation to the new versions and um, a very serious problem with it. And it's a verse that you don't hear talked about a lot in, in context of these problems with the new versions. So I just want to bring this to your attention if you don't already know about it and just explain um, what's wrong with it. Um, and the implications for you if you're a new Bible version reader. So let me just read this to you in the King James first. Uh, Matthew 5.22 But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. So pretty straightforward. Nothing really abnormal about that verse, uh, it's, it's obvious, fine. However, if you own one of these new Bible versions, you'll see, um, I hope, a problem with this verse. So let me read this to you in the New International Version, but the same is roughly um, true of the other versions. There, there are some small differences, but they all say the same ultimate thing here. So the New International reads, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to uh, judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says you fall will be in danger of the fire of hell. Now, you may not have spotted the, the problem there, with the exception of just obvious differences in, in the way they've said it. You may not have immediately spotted the difference. However, again, going back to the King James, I'll tell you where that problem is. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Without a cause. So there are two problems as a result of the modern translation of this verse. And we'll start with the first application which applies to the likes of you and me. So if you're a new Bible version reader, you, if you're reading the Bible and believe it to be the word of God... Which is a problem anyway, because it differs from the King James substantially in that particular part. Well, there's plenty of parts, but for the purposes of this video, it's that part. Um, what it's telling you to do um, is that anyone or everyone, different versions, anyone or everyone who is angry will be subject or liable to judgment or punishment, depending on what modern version you've got. But it ultimately means that you cannot get angry for any reason whatsoever because you'll be in danger of judgment or subject to punishment or whatever the wording is here. So you can't get angry. That's the application for this verse. If you're a new Bible version reader, you cannot get angry. You can't do it. You can't do it because you'll be in, in danger of judgment. Full stop. Whereas someone like me, a King James Bible reader, with a cause, I can get angry. And I don't use that to justify being angry. But I use it to justify that if I am angry for a righteous cause, for a, for a proper reason, you know, within the constraints of being righteously angry in other words you're not flying off the handle and going crazy but being righteously angry or indignant or opposed or you know bothered about something there's nothing wrong with being that way but the modern bible versions will teach you that you can't do that um, and this verse is really symptomatic of what's wrong with modern christianity it's too frightened to do anything it can't get angry it's always having to turn the other cheek it's always frightened to judge people you know they'll quote uh judge not lest ye be judged or um oh you know we can't we can't do that we can't um create problems we have to be passive and inactive um and you know not to offend anybody no 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 it's not true the bible never says that you have to be like that and you know the second application of this relates to our lord jesus christ and was he passive? Was he, um, uh, did he like not be sarcastic to people? Did he not uh, reprove and rebuke them? You only have to look at his words, especially to the Pharisees, to see how he was different to what modern Christians profess to be. 
Um, and, and, and again, the problem with the application of this verse is, and this is a great example, and, and this is how this verse undermines the whole doctrine of the Bible, uh, their Bible, you know, the, these modern NIVs or whatever, the NLTs, etc. Um, the, the great example that you can cite on this is when Jesus was angry, and he was angry, there's no question that he was angry, when he drove the money changers out of the temple. You know, when he went in there and he made a whip and just, you know, uh, tipped over the tables and was like, you know, whipping the, the floor and, and, and getting people out of that temple. Um, he wasn't doing that, you know, being nice. It wasn't like a sort of dance routine. He was righteously angry, burning with anger. He was absolutely indignant about what was going on there. He was angry with a cause. Now, these new versions, and you could probably see where I'm going with this, effectively... They're making Jesus himself, because you have to apply this to the whole Bible. You can't just go, well, it's just for me. It's for everything in the Bible. They're effectively making Jesus into a sinner. And we know that the cornerstone, or one of the you know, key tenets of the Christian faith, is that Jesus was sinless. Sinless son of God, without blemish, without spot, perfect. But hang on a second, wait a minute. If he got angry... Isn't he technically in danger of the judgment? Isn't he technically sinning? Didn't he himself say, you know, if you're angry with a brother, you know, that's almost like murder. But we're told here, if you have a cause for your righteous anger, there's nothing wrong with it. And he himself demonstrated that aptly, especially this temple example is a great example. So, you know, you have to look at this verse, Matthew 5, 22. If you've got a new version, uh, you can't be angry for any reason whatsoever. There's no, like, clauses or, you know, indica- you can't be angry. Sorry, can't do it. And that explains a lot of the weakness of modern Christianity. A lot of it. A lot of it. And it's just, uh, I can see why they do it. You know, I, I can, actually, it's quite impressive that they follow <laughs> their Bible to the letter. Um but they don't understand how it completely undermines Jesus. Whereas if you had a King James Bible, you won't find those contradictions and those problems. And it allows us to get righteously indignant and angry because we're allowed to do it with a cause. Rightly so. If you're you're righteously angry for the right reason, nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. But if you've got these new versions, I'm afraid, sorry, uh, you can't be angry for any reason because you'll be in danger of judgment. So just food for thought, really, guys. Matthew 5.22, a key verse, again, often overlooked, much like the uh, the other video I did, James 5.16, um, often missed. Um, and just take a look at it. Ask yourself the questions. Go and study it. Go and read it and go and study it. And just think to yourself about what it means. As I said, the application, not just for yourself, which is bad enough, um, but also what it means about our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he got angry, and you have to apply this principle. It's all about the application of it. Again, think about what it really means and ask yourself the question. And if you're using a modern Bible version, please just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get yourself a King James. It's in English. You can read it and you can understand it. And if you don't get the odd one or two words, does it make it archaic? No. The NIV uses a bunch of archaic words. Sheol and Hades and other rubbish you'll find that the King James is the clearest read that you've ever had. And if you're not sure, there's often words at the back, or you can read the sentence and it's pretty obvious what it means. It just requires a bit of effort, guys. You know, rather than these new versions that claim to be an easier read, well, they are, in some respects, uh, but they're dumbed down. And as I said, when you start removing very important words. I mean, there's problems with removing words from the Bible anyway. Serious problems. But when you remove that, do you see how it just undermines everything? It just completely undermines it. Something like that, without a cause, is one of those key foundations of our faith. And you take that away, you've got a severely weakened structure. So again, if you're a new, new version reader, sorry, you can't get angry for any reason. 
you profess to follow the Bible and believe it to be true, uh, sorry, you can't get angry. And if you do, you know, you're going to face judgment for that. And in my Bible, I know that's not true. And I know it's not true anyway, because I, I'm convicted to know it's not true. It's just so obviously not true. So just ask yourself the question, guys. I hope this video has been interesting to you. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks very much. Cheers. Goodbye.